making phone calls, they're texting, they're taking their anxiety and they're putting it into action. And I'm really hopeful that's going to pay off. Okay, so uh, Donald Trump, uh, Senator, sat down with Howard Kurtz of Fox News yesterday for a wide ranging interview in which the former president argued that a news program should be taken off the air because it aired contacts that he didn't like, that certain Democrats are, quote, enemies from within, including some of your colleagues, um, that January 6th was, quote, a beautiful thing, the, the insurrection yeah. at the Capitol, and that the dangerous lies he spread about legal Haitian migrants in Springfield, Ohio, weren't his fault. I'm going to play them, and I'd like to talk to you on the other side. Take a listen. I've never seen anything like it. She gave a horrible, incompetent answer on a news program. It's not an entertainment program. It's, mm -hmm. They call it news. They say it's a number one news program. And so she gives an answer that was shows that she's dumb or incompetent or something wrong with her. It's so bad that the people at CBS say, we're not going to do a little editing like the word the, make it there, something. You understand. They take the whole ridiculous answer out, and it was a long answer, and replace it with a much shorter answer that she did having to do with a totally different subject, which also didn't make sense, but it wasn't as incompetent. I think it's the biggest scandal I've ever seen for a broadcaster in 60 minutes. No, I think 60 minutes, I think it should be taken off the air, frankly. The outside people, the so-called enemies, if they're enemies, and they might not be enemies, mm -hmm. if you have a smart president, they can be handled. But when you have people investigating my campaign, when you have people, you know, they spied on my campaign now. You understand that. That's been proven. But they spy on your campaign. The Russia, Russia, Russia hoax was, was all made up, and now it's acknowledge that it was made up all of these different things you have the 51 different agents saying it was from russia and now they all say it wasn't from russia okay mm -hmm. so we were like all uh, many other things many many i could go order you just don't have enough time but what they've done is so terrible who's ever heard of anything like this adam shifty shift he's a crooked guy he's a crooked politician 100 percent. and he's going to be a senator now can you believe it uh, but again, no, no, he's a political opponent of yours, he's not, he's no, an no, enemy. No, he's a, well, he is, of course, he's an enemy. He's an enemy. He's a bad people. We have a lot of bad people. But when you look at Shifty Schiff and some of the others, uh, yeah, they are, to me, the enemy from within. I think Nancy Pelosi is an enemy from within. Uh, she lied. She was supposed to protect the Capitol. A small group of people went down to the Capitol. And then a lot of strange things happened, including police ushering them into the Capitol. I mean, you know that. Uh, and a lot of strange things. So I'm not referring to that. I'm saying that when I saw that uh, tremendous crowd, the largest group I've ever spoken to, uh, in front of uh, these beautiful monuments, uh, I thought it was actually a beautiful thing. It was a protest. Your famous line about Springfield, Ohio, and I, I take your point that 15 to 20,000 legal Haitian immigrants settling in that area causes a lot of friction. But when you said, you know, it's gone viral, they're, they're eating the dogs, they're eating the cats, you say you're just reporting what had been said. But why not say now, well, look, that turned out not to be true. I don't know, if it's, my true. I don't know if it's true or not true. I read Eating something. The pets, you don't know if it's true or not true. No. It's been debunked by well, the officials. Well, what about the goose, the geese? What about the geese? What happened there? They're, they're all missing. I there was know. one Listen, guy with howling, two howling, geese. Howling. I have no idea. I said something. The big problem is that you can't put 30,000 people into a 50,000 person town or city and expect this city to even survive or do well. What they've done to Springfield, Ohio, is very, very unfair. And, I mean, there are a lot of stories. There are a lot of other stories that I've heard that are horrible stories. I haven't said it. Maybe I will, maybe I won't. But that's a story that was reported, and I said that. Why don't you go after the newspaper that wrote it? Don't, don't you know, blame me. Oh, we bet you keep spreading the lies. And even spread the lies there, and then... Howard calls him out and he says, the goose, the geese are all missing. And then mumbles and says, I have no idea. I just 
Senator, I just I, a couple of things. We we could talk about all the lies there. We could talk about Springfield. We could talk about the lies. He talks about the Russia hoax. By the way, I want to read you what the Republican-led Senate Intel Committee said about the 2016 campaign. The report's language is often stark, uh, and said that Paul Manafort and the campaign's uh, receptivity to Russian outreach was a grave counterintelligence threat and made the campaign susceptible to, quote, malign Russian influence. So that doesn't sound, if Marco Rubio-led Intel Committee is saying that the campaign posed a grave counterintelligence threat, um, doesn't sound like a hoax to me. I, I do wonder, what about a major party candidate, a former president, saying that she is not an enemy, Putin's not an enemy, Kim Jong-un is not an enemy, uh, but that fellow Americans who oppose his policies are right. enemies of the state, enemies from within. Yeah. Yeah. Look, 10 different ways Donald Trump is telling us that he intends to be a dictator that if he can seize power, he wants to run it like a dictator. That's true mm -hmm. when he identifies not the countries and the leaders of the countries that are dictatorships that threaten the United States, but identifies people who are just his political rivals here in the United States. It's true when he says, oh, if there's news coverage that disagrees with the Trump position, then it needs to be shut down. It's true when Donald Trump lies, gets caught in a lie, and just continues to repeat the lie, because he's saying, there are no curbs on me. I will go ahead as Donald Trump, and I will proclaim what constitutes truth. To fighting against the Soviet Union, whose entire life has been dedicated to calling out Soviet Union's evils when people on the left try to whitewash their evils in the 40s and 50s and beyond. The same Ann Applebaum uh, who continues to try to talk about the challenge of totalitarianism and authoritarianism for the Wall Street Journal editorial. She's the radical leftist. See, doesn't that tell you something? Me, somebody who's far more conservative than Donald Trump, mm -hmm. are 99% of the Republicans in Congress. Conservative, by the way, we used to talk about being conservative, like balancing budgets, pushing back against Reagan, uh, pushing back against Russian aggression like Reagan did, mm -hmm. like Reagan conservatives. Far more conservative than anybody in Congress that I've seen over the past eight years, far more conservative on those, the, those basic structures of what we grew up knowing conservatism is. And Ann Applebaum is the person here called out as being the radical leftist. And it, it, it's, it's revealing, isn't it? And, and here, somebody with a 95% uh, conservative lifetime record in Congress, um, we're, we're the leftists, we're the quote, sick puppies, which Donald Trump said yesterday yeah. when another Fox News interviewer said, Joe Scarborough said that you once said that you were going, uh, that your people said that they were gonna go after Morning Joe. And, and instead of just playing the tape of Cash Patel saying that, yeah. and Steve Bannon saying that, giving him that evidence, again, it's smoke and mirrors, so again, I'm concerned about this because it's shameful and it doesn't call out authoritarian language, Mika, but make no mistake, the pace is quickening and there is a reason he is saying every day, Democrats are the enemy within. Democrats are the enemy within Pelosi uh, and, and, and Schiff and, and, all, and, and all of these people. This, this is, they know. Everybody knows. The first time this is around. Coming at to the Sunday show. So, what the hell are you doing, I'm Joe? Smiling. <laughs> oh my God, Jonathan! That clip. What Lindsey Graham said today makes me smile because look how pissed off he is. That tells me he knows we're making a difference. Look, I, you've heard me say this before. I've been in every battleground state. I just got back from Arizona this weekend. I'm talking to Arizona, uh, Republicans on the ground. So many of them are voting for Kamala Harris. I don't think the polls are picking it up. 
Lindsey Graham knows that. This is going to make a difference. And they're nervous about it. Mm -hmm. What do you think, Amisha? Well, I, I think that he was running scared. I believe um, what uh, Congressman Walsh said just a moment ago. At the end of the day, this is also the same senator who was ducking, dodging, and hiding on January 6th. So to be that guy who was trying to call any savior that was necessary and to acknowledge that Donald Trump's rhetoric was what led us there, him lying about the election results, him telling people to assemble, him saying that we we're going to take our country back, him saying all of these things has created, I think, a very dangerous place for the Republican Party, which they refused to, for whatever reason, step away from. And for Lindsey Graham, the most dangerous person we've seen in the White House has been someone who not only led an insurrection, but also someone who did not want the peaceful transfer of power, who did everything in his process to ensure that it didn't happen. Someone who did not try to call down the dogs when his own sitting vice president was having his life threatened with gallows outside of the Capitol. That is a threat to our democracy. So, folks, Donald is taking a play a piece out of the fascist playbook which is to call everyone that isn't him a leftist radical, right? And that includes people like myself who are on the left and are at times radical in their positions, not authoritarian and not violent, but I do envision a certain post-capitalist world as being ideal. But then you also have liberal reformers, left liberal reformers like Liz Warren, who want to make significant changes but are very much still capitalists and are very much but are very much to the left of the average senator and member of congress and then you have moderates but then you even have conservatives you have people like they're they're calling the wall street journal and they're calling joe scarborough former republican member of congress a leftist these people aren't leftists only a fascist does that Right. And it demonstrates one, this idea that, oh, Trump is appealing to the working class and whatnot. No, he's he's running a campaign for his fascist billionaire buddies. And he's tricked enough people to think they're part of the club when really they're going to be on the dinner me dinner menu with everybody else. But also it demonstrates his campaign of dehumanization in his mind to call someone a commie or a leftist is to deny their humanity. And that's what you do. Step one, you refer to all of your enemies by this term that automatically marks them as inhuman. Then what you do is you ramp up the violence. And Trump has been doing this to people of color forever. And American society has done this to people of color forever. But Donald is ramping it up, not just on communists and socialists who have, say, during the Cold War, been dehumanized and targeted and all of that, but now taking it on to basically anybody who happens to be even a moderate Republican is dangerous times. He is terrifying people. The one silver lining is that he's basically saying 70% of Americans are enemies of the people. And if you really think that, then maybe you're the enemy of the people.